The following podcast contains scenes of graphic violence, abuse, and a host with a recent acne breakout and general breakdowns. Viewers' discretion is advised. To top it all off, Donald Trump was born on 14th June, making him a Gemini, and my urge to be reborn has never been stronger. Hello, you amazing goldfishes or goldfishes. I do not know what to call you. Like people who love koi more than everything else are called koiists, I think. So I don't know. Hi, goldfishes. Welcome to the 12th episode of In the Memory of the Goldfish, hosted by me, Koi, who is today like I is today. I'm, I don't know why I'm talking in the third person, or like a beautiful mix of Milan melancholy as the ancient ancients used to say and spunk well um today's episode for once is going to be very fun and unique and funky to an extent like the fishy news is our usual fishy news um unreasonably sensual that is out of the blue is going to be a conspiracy theory which is going to have multiple parts and i'm really looking forward to research about the rest of the parts because i did not really do it today because it i was like oh my god now and uh, um, yeah, the story it is of um, Chris and Luz. I forgot their name. Basically, the girls, the lost girls of Panama. Well, in the meantime, let's go fish for some fishy news. So the first fish that I've caught is not my cat. It is a venomous snake found curled up inside a teenager's asthma inhaler. Imagine somebody you know or you yourself is having asthma attack and then you take a puff from the inhaler and suddenly there's a big black snake in your throat and you're like, oh, choke me, daddy. Um, yeah, certain. Okay, let's not imo- ima- imagine. Yeah, let's not imagine that. I mean, um, you know, if, like when I was going through the article, it said that while the snake was only a juvenile, Mr. McKenzie said it could have given a nasty bite if scared or provoked. I mean, Australia, and this happened in Australia, and it is a beautiful country. Like, snakes are given the status of, status of juvenile, and accordingly, they were, you know, like, treated for the stupid things or, like, the venomous things that they did. Probably all of my exes are going to love the place, but the sad thing is, I've never had one. Like, it's just me, my eleven souls and the god of the fucking universe but no let's never have an ex i mean on a serious note why like not really a serious note like a like a proper commentary on the news most of you often ask me why do i even do such things and i have no idea why i'm doing this news but like from my experience of animal planet and what i was able to read in the article so australia is going to go to winters and all the snakes are gonna go into hibernation mode so in this time they are very overactive very overactive does not make sense grammatically so there's nothing really serious about it it's just their behavior it's cute the snake was pretty cute though it is venomous it cannot really like kill people but it is kind of fatal depending on whom it's like you know, biting or like crawling down the throats of, I mean, down my throat. I mean, no, wait. Uh, Also, my mom has expressed a great deal of interest in properly listening to my podcast and I've been like delaying this specific thing because I need to stop overly sensualizing thing if I want her to hear it. Like when she was like, okay, I need to hear your podcast. And I was like, yeah, no, like, I talk about too many dicks there and she's like, it's fine, that's funny. I'm like, yeah, no, you're not going to find it funny. So I should probably stop covering such news which would make me say things like this at the risk of getting kicked out. Or you guys can finally start promoting the podcast by leaving me reviews and such that, that I can become rich and, you know, move to LA or something. Whatever works. Um, The second one. I did this one f- just for the headlines and how sensual I can make it. Fair warning. I read, thick as a brick, Scotsman takes harrowing jet skis ride across the Irish Sea, Irish Sea, yeah, that was right, to visit girlfriend. I mean, he, uh, so, like, 
now something that is like very interesting is he talking about his dong or is he talking about his girlfriend or is he talk like what are they talking about that is as thick as a brick and bricks aren't like really thick they are hard and like all other things should be soft cushiony and you know like comfortable um then like this and um, like obviously below in the article when i started actually reading it they were like so he was described by a friend as he's nice but he is thick as a brick so basically his brain is as thick as a brick like why else why was i thinking about anything else the uh, the podcast is gonna be bg13 by the next episode i hope and like this another one which which was very funny and i'm going to obviously centralize it because this is most probably the last time i'm going to be able to do that most probably not who am i even kidding i'll just like make sure that she does not listen to the podcast good lord that's like a lot of risk guys um i don't know why he did it says mclagan's mother the guy's name is mclagan i mean she, what she meant to say was that's what she said but who who cares he could have killed himself she also noted however like dale mclagan the guy he was 28 he was even sen- he is even sentenced i do not know to like four weeks of jail time because of this like incredibly dangerous but romantic 40 km journey on a personal watercraft from scotland's isle of withton to the isle of the man and you know the craziest thing is that he cannot swim and i mean this is true love right there guys this is literal true love find me someone like this and i will love that person forever and like a little bit of love will be saved for you too because you kind of acted like the broker in this case like if you need a commission i'm not into orgies so we'll have to figure something else out i mean if dave mclag knew that if he became the president of estades unidenses is that right of united states he could have just teleported to her you know yep that is exactly what we're going to talk about today in out of the blue um i'm going to talk to you about the project pegasus um so originally when i read about it uh, so i started reading about it after watching rick and morty when they were like against obama or something and obama was teleporting left right so i just went into that direction and do not know what possessed me but i was like okay this is total bullshit a lot of rick and morty in my eyes and it feels like a total bullshit judge me or not i don't give a fucking care but yeah so i love to vehemently deny all conspiracy theories because they are just like what the actual fuck like some of them that fbi is looking at you all the time and all those things i can understand and kind of agree yeah they can monitor you all the time i do have a duct tape on like the camera of my pc but whatever some of them make sense but some of them do not make sense at all this one in specific it's about teleportation time travel and like now this this cannot be possible but the, like why i'm actually covering it is that you know on the first page of google if you search project pegasus you will not be able to find anything on the second page basically nothing as you like keep on diving deeper like it's it's it feels that it's made very difficult to find it and then conveniently marvel did something on it and it's it covers a lot of wikipedia and stuff and i'm like okay this this is kind of weird kind of tricky and maybe not enough people know about it that's why it's so difficult to research about but if not enough people know about it why did marvel take up the exact name project pegasus i mean it's a lot of things and I, it's just like um like kind of hidden so just because how difficult it is to research about it and how visibly i don't know crooked the research process was i'm like maybe just like a little maybe there's something real to it and maybe it's completely something different i do not know but it is interesting so i will try to be as neutral as possible and try not to vehemently deny everything and this would be in parts 
I hope it is in parts I do not like because I have not researched the entire thing. Maybe next week while I'm researching, I'm like, alright, this is bullshit, and I'm not gonna do it. If that happens, I'll tell you on my Instagram, hopefully. But I will at least do a second part to this. Maybe third, maybe fourth. I was thinking of doing like five different parts. So for next five episodes, I'm gonna give you like cliffhangers. Anyway, starting with the main thing. So alright, um, 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 where are my these things? Okay these things goodness uh, my notes yeah okay so um a lot of information for this episode i found on this website called project pegasus.net that is project p r o j e c t pegasus p e g a s u s .net and the protagonist for the said conspiracy theory is andrew d basag basiago I did not look up his name, how to pronounce his name. I'm really sorry for that, Mr. Andrew. Um, basically, he became an official whistleblower in 2004, uh, saying that when he was six to seven years old and up until he was 12, in 1968, he was a test subject for an experiment slash program, which was run by DARPA. And originally it was called ARPA. They also created the ARPANET, which is basically the internet as we know it. Like they basically laid out the system for it. You must have read about it in high school if you were not like looking at girls or boys or gender neutral people, unlike me because I was technically homeschooled. Anyway, um, so ARPA or DARPA are basically a mega US military thingy organization -y people. They basically like weaponize everything um they were recently in the news saying uh, like not saying allegedly putting cameras on bees because they wanted to have like better surveillance from them and like i believe that's the main reason why the u.s government decided to save bees because they wanted to look at everybody and how motion sick would you be when you put like a camera on a bee and it's like blah 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 and I don't know how would you even like spy on anybody. Do you train the bee? Whatever. But yeah. So like just a little rundown about DARPA, ARPA, whatever. So basically Mr. Basiago or I'm going to go with Andrew because it's easier to speak. Uh, says that DARPA has not disclosed all and everything that they've discovered and researched about. And he says that they have discovered how to do teleportation and he was one of the first successful subjects to actually do teleportation. They say it was after President Kennedy's death that uh, they were able to successfully master teleportation. And I mean, I remember Kennedy's death from the crown and view like that man was weird. No, like, OK, whatever. That was weird out of the blue. So basically in the 70s, he says that they had a quantum technology to look, look into the past and the future events and tell the presidents about it. Basically, in my head, it translated to they become like scientifically enhanced tarot card readers and asked Hecate for some blessings by which they can like switch places. I do not know. I like, I know this shit. I'm a witch. I just do not know science. Okay. Now, uh, so basically they wanted to specifically know how and what is going to be the effect of time travel specifically on children. They teleported the said children to Mars. I had read some articles which said Obama went to Mars as Obama, yes, that was the name, right? Barack Obama went to Mars as a teenager. I have not researched about that cliffhanger. Next episode, guys, do up. And that um, the children maintained relationships with the extraterrestrials. They spoke with future presidents to relay information. Now, fun thing with Andrew is that his father, Raymond F. Bathiago, was a senior project engineer at ralph m parsons co is a company which is like very famous to be working with the u.s military in very close contact like they have high level security clearance they worked on like nuclear and chemical jet pro propulsions for the american government their clients have been nasa the darp arp whatever they have built nuclear missile storage facility thingy so uh, Andrew says that when he was six, he was taken to Curtis Wright Aeronautical Co. facility in Woodridge, New Jersey, building 68 to be specific. 
and he defines that inside there's a device that consisted of two parentheses shaped object about eight feet tall and 10 feet apart when the device was turned on a curtain of light which looked like water happened like i don't know how to explain it properly like you know watch Freck and Morty with, with the Barrack Obama's episode it would give a good visual so um he went there with his dad and his dad explained that he was going to hold his hand and they were going to count to three and jump through the curtain of the said energy and when they did that they found themselves at a certain point of a tunnel and like some face of the earth some like it was a lot of sci-fi things so I'm going to just like skip over all that and when they like went through it they ended up in state capital complex in santa fe new mexico just a several just few seconds later now um so they were able to tel teleport over 2000 miles across i believe in several seconds and there was a guy named bill richardson who was there to greet them along with the defense attache working with DARPA, a man called Donald, not Trump, Donald Rumsfeld, Rumsfeld, I should have looked up the pronunciation too. Um, now, the thing about people uh, like materializing in the state capital in New Mexico is something that a woman complained about all the time. Like the, She was even there in media for a little while, but she's very obscure. I was not able to really find any information on her as such. Maybe she was hushed by the government or whatever. Like, finding information on this, there's a, a lot of information if you're able to click on the right link. But finding that right link is all that it takes. So yeah, this is going to be it for today's Out of the Blue. In the next time, I'm going to talk about somebody that you absolutely fucking know. Who has a successor that you all hate, that is Elon Musk. And how was he related to time travel, how he died and how the US government most probably did some shit with his thingies. No, he did, they don't, did not do anything with his thingy. They did things with his research, I think. And yeah, imagine if all the missing persons cases were teleportation experiments gone wrong. I mean... How is that for a conspiracy theory, huh, CIA? Like, are you gonna now send all those daddies in, like, black suits to tie me up now? Like, are you gonna gag me because I'm telling the truth? Okay, no. Well, I wa binge-watched Bonding today and I, like, finished it. And you cannot blame me for being, like, kind of dominatrixy in my own weird e manner. I should stop saying E after everything. Okay, so today's... Um, what is this that this podcast does? The story, <laughs> today's story is called Dirt and it's about a missing person's thingy and I did not think of the teleportation possible clause but we've thought of it now and that can come later when I talk tell you about the reality of it. So let's get right on to it. Um, the story, as I told you, is called Dirt, and the time frame that I've given to it, which is actually historically accurate, um, 1st April 2000, like not totally historically accurate, kind of historically accurate, 1st April 2014, and the time is um, 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 19 hours 30 minutes, so that is like 7.30 p.m. Oh God. Why did we decide to get an unpredictable tart on an unpredictable trick? I have no idea where that lit little idiot disappeared to. I don't even remember his name properly. Both of us are just calling him Bo all the time. He didn't even react to it properly. Now, look where he's gone off to. I have really, like... I can't, I don't remember which exactly what they're talking about, but if it's a man or a dog, it kind of sounds like the same person thingy, or a child for that matter, or a pig. Um, so, I mean, for heaven's sake, a hoot or a howl or something, how can we even go back without you? They will be devastated. It's not like you saw the squirrel for the first time, Bo. Why did you have to run behind it? It's not like your overfed ass can catch a turtle. It's a dog, I'm pretty sure it's a dog now. Yes, I remember it's a dog now. Um, 
we ran after him. Cops leg got stuck in some kind of root. I leo the forest. I have I leo the forest in the middle of the forest. I have no idea what I was trying to say. Something the forest, but what kind of a self-respecting, God-fearing tree, tree makes such boogie traps for unsuspecting kind people? Good Lord, tree, get a life. I mean, really, fuckness, goodness, gracious. Carp is supposed to be the smarter one. The one, you know, like, would end up saving me and carrying me on her shoulder like she promised. I am a pillow you can fall on from today to eternity. And so, wish for her to say that those that in our vows. However, right now, I want nothing more than to walk out. If not walk out, crawl out with her from this miss. I did not sign up for this. This wouldn't help me improve my accent in any way. Oh, what do I talk to? The trees? If I messed up the pronunciation, they'll grow another root to trip me over too. Uh, you deserve it for mispronouncing impermeable, impermeabilizante, impermeabilizante, you over-optimistic bitch. So, okay, so a lot of you have complained that I do not like really have distinction between how I comment on the story so versus the story. And I'm really sorry for that. I do not really like making those distinctions because that's kind of stupid because I don't want to read the story like this deep voice which you are like that's idiotic so a comment like a side comment on that impermi belizante is a spanish word which i cannot pronounce and i'm good at pronouncing spanish spanish according to my spanish teacher it basically means something which is impermeable like my existence um yeah self bound bitch so yep and they're stuck in the forest and i kid you not this story sounds fun because the reality of this is so messed up. So I wanted to write it in this manner. Anyway, back to the story. Carp puts her head, hand on my shoulder. Calm down, my morning dew, she says. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Why is she getting to comfort me when her leg is bluer than my cap? Why does she get to support me here too? Why can't I bring myself to do it? You know, this emotion of feeling worthless is something that I have felt so much with some of my relationships. For example, this, okay, that's like a huge segue. So basically somebody that I know gives a lot to me, supports me emotionally and a lot. And whenever she is in some kind of trouble herself, I'm not able to do it because I'm 19. And it, like, I'm 19 is not an excuse, but I'm stupid and I cannot handle my own emotions. So I'm like, why do I, why am I always on the like, the taking side of things i don't know how like okay um yeah so i relate to koi in this sense it, the koi of the story continuing with the story the trees are closing up on me i feel i left my xanax back at my room okay so i don't know i'm I don't, i'm not sure if xanax is the anxiety drug or not but i think it is if it's not please do not scream at me Koi, you won't need this in the forest. It will stress you there, my beauty. She said, Cop sits chuckling when I was trying to put things with it earlier. I do not know what she, what to do. She rubs a little soil on the wound on her elbow. She said it won't contaminate. It will stop the blood. She's a genius. I hope her genius can also fix up her leg too, like immediately. I do not know what to do. Bitch, you gotta learn magic and do like abracadabra shit out of all the wounds. Okay, I have decided. Get on my back. I'll start with 10 steps and like that we'll cover it out. Okay, I say with a lot of passion in my voice. Do you even know where we even go? Where's the cabin? We might as well end up going deeper in the forest and die. She was... She has a certain amount of irritation in her voice, something I do not think I've ever noticed before in her. Was it always there? Where, what do you suggest we do? Die here? I say. Um, I'd rather if we wait for someone, or you can go look for my bag. It fell when I tripped, she said as she pointed her thumb to the right, pointing at the devil tree. The next timestamp that I've given is... 2nd April 2014, 1.12am. 
so about i believe six seven hours eight nine i have no idea how many hours after that god her backpack ended up on the fifth corner of the earth i got lost i started to howl how that dog should have i love the koi in this story i love how often i make the main character koi so relatable to my own self and like through these you get to know me so much better good lord i'm so vulnerable in this podcast and the reason why my family should not listen to it i howled carp howled back i love carp and their understanding it took me 132385 breakdowns in like 6 hours if my watch is functioning properly to get the fucking the freaking bag back fishing bag back yeah if, whatever her thing was heavy, heavier than it needed to be all it had was tin cans and food when i somehow made it to her her eyes felt bloodshot to me i could not really see them so i clicked a picture the only source of light i could really get my hands on they actually were i'm not sure if it was the sleep deprivation or the anger that she had on my inadequacy honey it's most probably that her feet is bluer than your fucking cap that she has bloodshot eyes she's in pain but Koi has this tendency to make everything about them, him, her, whatever. Come on here, give me your shoulder. Let's simply sleep and forget the dog. Let's go back where we've came in from. Now your marks must be all over the place, she said. I felt a wave of calm rushing into me. There was no longer any annoyance in her voice. Yes, you fucking Koi! everything's about you if there's no annoyance in her it's about you what an idiot she okay um <laughs> i love myself guys just like continuing with the story okay i am not wearing socks and suddenly it's getting cold and my nose is kind of blocking up so if i'm doing this all the time i do not have corona i guess oh i have some amazing news for you guys I, i'll cover it like maybe at the end of the episode I'll note it down. Okay. Um, she, so, okay. I fell beside her, making sure nothing of me touches her foot. Our waist touch each other just a little. She moaned a little as she shifted herself to take support of me. She placed both her hands in the space between her thighs. I know this is the most precious thing you can do. I do this with, my cat does this with me when he sleeps like right next to my thigh, puts his hands like between our body kind of. It's like warm. It's cute. Um, where have I left? Yeah. So she placed both her hands in between her thighs. I knew that she first looked into my eyes. I clicked another picture of her hair. How golden and beautiful. It's interesting how... There are little mosquitoes around here at this hour. Packing half a gallon of must mosquito repellent instead of water now seems like a, not a very smart choice. At least I have this one thing to whine about when we get out of this. There is... I... Okay, you know, this is always very good. Whenever you're in, like, in a stupid situation, start to note down things you want to rant about. So like it makes the thing comparatively easier. You know, I'm trying to like speak louder a little bit and then I go back to my normal tone. I have no idea why I'm doing this. It's weird that I'm like at the 12th episode and I'm still getting nervous for recording the podcast. Fun! Um, there is, continuing with the story, there's a rustle, rustle in the shrubs. It doesn't wake carp up. Maybe there isn't any and I'm just on my toes. I can hear everything. Even the things that do not make sound, I feel. I click picture of whatever it is. I heard Bear Grill say that they all run away when there's a sudden flash of light, I think. I love me quoting Bear Grylls. I've not seen his shows in like years now. I mean, it seems to be kind of working, right? Each flash, the rustling goes away. The sounds, all of them go away. 
it's silence for 10 minutes then the crickets start to chirp again you know there's a cricket actually chirping or like cricketing whatever it's called around me and it's giving me more goosebumps and i wrote this story while i was traveling and it's a story kind of about the two, these two girls traveling and i was getting like goosebumps the entire time because i was in the car while i was typing and it was weird it was very very weird writing this story i'm not kidding then it's the leaf which start leaves which start to rustle then it's an owl which flaps its wings then it's the sound of the and then it's the sound of the bushes i can do this all night growler so the sounds that she has given it a name growler i closed my eyes to absorb the sight i have written s a r L I E N C E silence. I have no idea. Silence. And to see if there is anything left that makes these sounds. There wasn't for five seconds. Now, as if Carp was waiting for me to close my eyes, she started to scream the loudest thing I've ever heard. I know I immediately opened my eyes. I know I did. She was holding her left knee. Her swollen foot, foot was no longer there. It seems to have been clearly cut off. Cleanly cut off. It stood there in front of us on a little rock. Behind it was this sound. It was there. The air was just vibrating as it was making its growling sounds. I picked Carp up. I'm getting goosebumps. Oh my God. I, how stupid I am to get scared by my own fucking story. I mean, this is like a compliment to my own self, but okay. I picked Carp up, threw her on my shoulder like I threw her towels, and I started to run. The growler was still far away it really didn't bother much carp suddenly bit my back not the sexy kind she actually bit me she bit me and I instantly instinctively threw her away again like a wet towel i knew that i did i suddenly i knew that i did because of her moans and everything that was around me subsided. My hands were shaking. I took out the camera. I clicked a picture. I saw her beautiful golden hair with a waterfall of crimson flowing out. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. The end. That was the story. Okay, what? How can I be choppy about reading such a story? How can I fucking write such a story while I was traveling? What's wrong with me? Oh my God, I need therapy. Um, I was going to continue the story even further about I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. And then after that, the growler would come near and then dismember both of the girls and like each and every detail how their intestines would come out and stuff. But I was too creeped out at that point because I was as I told you guys I was traveling and I really did not want anything more to go with it okay so and the story in itself is kind of a mix of my like like some stories I've done recently they were like totally like coked up fiction inspired thingy this is a mix of the two um, so the girls being together is something that I've not read about really. So I'm pretty sure that it is false. The paranormal glow growler in this case is um, like, is also kind of false, I think. Like because it's a missing persons case, kind of mix missing persons, dead people case, I don't know. And... But the events, the entirety of the thing, like, as I tell you about, it made me want to put in the paranormal twist here. And the story, as I told you before, is like the actual incident, as I told you before, is called The Lost Girls of Panama. La 
uh, Las Chicas Orlandes, as they're called in the Costa Rican village, or the disappearance of Chris Kramers and Lizanne Froon in Rocket, Panam- Panama on 1st April 2014. So they went on the trek on 1st April 2014, but they did not like all the other events were like spread out evenly throughout the times of their disappearance. That's why I said like it's kind of historically accurate, like kind of very kind of historically accurate. And 1st April, I went with that because it's kind of like the April Fool's Day and it's like fun and like jokes and shit. And this happened on April Fool's Day. And I'm like, why are we still celebrating April Fool's Day when all this happened? And shouldn't be like do make like it a missing person thing but anyway so uh lizanne froon was 21 she graduated from applied sciences and chris was 22 when she had a degree in cultural social education um chris was actually very tall she was one six no chris was not that tall Okay, I think I've confused these. I have no idea. Okay, so Chris, I say, is 167 centimeters tall and she's considered to be extroverted, extravagant, cheerful, intelligent, and outspoken. Lizanne, Lizanne is very... Lizanne, yeah. Lizanne is very tall. She's 184 centimeters, I believe, almost eight, uh, six feet. Um, she was an experienced mountaineer. Um, she was a thoughtful person. She was intelligent, empathetic, and a little bit shy. So these two women, they met while working in a restaurant called Den Klein and Hop. Den Klein and Hop. I, I do not know how to pronounce it in Dutch. Dutch. I, I do not speak Dutch. In Amsterdam. And they both rented rooms in the same student dorms or houses. And they were kind of like like immediate besties. They immediately hit off and they did what all besties do, a plan a graduation trip. So on after like saving for about six months, on 15th March of 2014, they went to Costa Rica. There they spent some time at the coast, they picked up some Spanish, like brushed up more on the Spanish skills, just had fun. And after two weeks of spending time there, they changed their coast, they changed their direction, like not technically changed, they went to the main thing of the trip that was the village called Brocket in uh, Panama. Like, it's it's a very beautiful village. I looked up the pictures where they intended to teach the local children. However, like, I'm not sure which one is true, but some article said that their internship was totally cancelled and some say that it was delayed for about a week. So they were like, all right, fine. Um, they anyways ended up staying with the local family for about like for the week of cancellation or the permanent cancellation since they were already there. So on 1st of April 2014, it was a very pleasant day. The girls, they decided to walk the La Pianista Trail, which is basically like you go up, then you go down kind of path. It is, um, and I believe La Pianista also kind of translates to that. And so they like packed light clothing, tank tops and shorts with a camera, some money and a cell phone. One was an iPhone and another was a Samsung Galaxy. And this would be very interesting later on. Now in the evening, um, like they went there for their trek and they also took like a village dog or the family that they left with dog with them. And the dog came back in the evening, but the girls did not. So the host family, they started to search for the girls around the neighborhood and stuff, but they were not really able to find them. So fair, like fair thing, the trail was about, I believe, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine miles away from their host's host house. Maybe I've written it later in the notes, but I do not remember. It was like, it was far, but not that far away. So the dog could have walked back home. Um, so they searched around, the host family searched around, but they could not really find them. And they decided to wait another day before calling the police. It was on the 3rd of April that the local authorities started to search for the girls. It was on 6th of April that both of the girls' parents and some Dutch detectives landed the Costa Rican soil and with them some local police with dog units and helicopters did like a very thorough search of the area. 
but they did the search for about 10 days but they were not able to find anything um so a lot of locals do say that even after the 10 days they kept on looking for the girls because costa rican people and latino people in general are gems and also the parents of the girls were offering a 30000 reward to whosoever was able to find them or give them an information and such okay so after 10 days they as they were not able to find anything it kind of went cold however it was 10 weeks later in june that a local tribeswoman found a backpack in a rice uh backpack in like rice in a rice pad paddy field on the bank of the culebra or the serpent river now this woman said that um uh, the bag floated on the very day that she found it because she was a frequent visitor at the spot and she visited the spot the very the day before yeah the day before and it was not there all right so the place where they found the um, backpack was 17 kilometers from bucket and 8 kilometers from the trail so it was estimated that it was about 8 hours away on foot from the last known location and the village in itself was in a very remote area so it would have been very difficult for them to hike there on foot for after like 10 weeks given that they did not really carry anything for survival now with this the people like the detectives and people had something to search about to look into for and such now uh in the backpack there were two pairs of sunglasses 83 dollars in cash frun's passports or both of the girls passports i think it was both of these passports but i've written frun's passport so i have no idea who to trust my brain or the notes there was a water bottle two bras i saw the pictures too so i can attest to that and the most important of the discoveries which actually kind of not help solve the case but give it a lot more direction and make it even more creepy was their cameras and phones so um it's said that the phones remained in service for almost 10 days after their disappearance the last time the phone was one of the phones was turned on to check something was on 11th april over the span of 4 days there were 77 total attempts like of calling the police both via 112 the emergency number in netherlands the girls were from netherlands if i not mentioned that before and 911 which is basically the emergency number in panama now using the call logs and like you know those things they were able to figure out an outline of how much time they were in the forest and stuff now it's also fair to note that lazan was had asthma and oh wow the snake in the asthma inhaler and now lazan had asthma and she complained to the host family about like coughing shortness of breath and like pollen and such and it's it's considered that her asthma with like the paired with the altitude differences and the sudden changes not having a cell phone signal and them hiking like a very advanced trail like this trail is actually very dangerous as i'll tell you like later on why and how the women were at a very high risk but lisan's asthma inhaler was not really among the belongings in the backpack which was kind of weird so uh, also the weirdest like the weirdest part is that the investigators determined that the belongings of the women had 34 different fingerprints 13 of the oh fuck sorry 13 of them were on the bag in were in the bag like the contents in the bag okay okay i'm still getting goosebumps this is one of the creepiest things i've ever read and it's such of like a mix between true crime and paranormal it's like mostly for most part true crime but yeah there's no real paranormal angle to it that i was able to actually research so maybe if you know something tell me so um the cell phone 
revealed that something happened to the girls at 3 40 39 p.m because that was the first time that they attempted to call the emergency line first the international one the netherlands the dutch one and then the panama line since there was no reception the calls were never connected i mean maybe nothing happened to them and they were just lost and they decided to call the authorities to like find them um so on 1st april like both phones tried to connect to an emergency line on the 2nd of april they tried four times each day they made more and more attempts to find a signal connection it seemed something seemed to especially have happened in the 5th between 5th or on 5th and 7th or between these days that um something happened to lazan it feels or chris sorry something happens to chris that lazan's a lazan's samsung battery had run out and chris's iphone was now the only phone which had battery power due to the dense jungle none of their attempts like as i told you before went through though one of uh, one of the calls i believe which was made from the iphone went through but it went through only for 2 seconds and the connection broke now on 6th of april somebody tried to unlock chris's iphone but did not know the pin now things get start to get like really weird why would somebody want to open her iphone if they just simply want to dial the emergency number they need not open the iphone no and like it was on 11th that the apple apple phones battery ran out and something that bear grills would never teach you is that you need to buy apple devices if you want to survive the wild because it has an amazing design and an amazing battery life and will completely obliterate any existence of cash and stability of your pockets now this was the paid promotion which apple really did not pay me for but they should because i am basically promoting them because they can save your lives once if you are stuck in the panamian desert panamian forest whatever so now this was about the phones all right if you think that was oh my god so gruesome so deadly guess what happened when they opened the camera um like initially there were some cute pictures from the april 1st morning and but things went creepy as fuck on the 8th of april now there were about there were a lot of photos clicked between 1 am and 4 am on 8th april the photos showed um there were some like belongings of the girls spread out on rocks like plastic bags candy wrappers uh, candy wrappers tin thingies like those tin cans opened up and in kind of like a circle in a very humanoid pattern and there were like oddly piled mounds of dirt there was a mirror in between of them it kind of felt like a ritual to be honest and to add to this nightmare there was a picture of chris's hair this picture i was not able to see like i was not able to find but it was quoted everywhere that there was a picture i closed my eyes and the pic like the picture formulated in front of i visualized it and i'm like oh my god okay um where is it yeah so there was a picture of chris's head her strawberry blonde hair and a stream of dried blood flowing from her forehead there was a total of 90 pictures clicked some which were taken few seconds apart other up to 15 minutes later several shots appear to have been deliberately taken uh at pointing at something some of them were like simply blurred indicating that they were taken like under duress or like some kind of anxious breakdown at this point the girls were in the forest for a week and some people say that they were trying to like use the camera as a source of light as i mentioned in my story or yeah and there was this one picture thinking about which gives me such goosebumps i'm like i'm getting goosebumps in on the insides of my thighs this time without even getting to the thigh part of the story okay so there was this one picture of air there there was allegedly a body at the base of a cliff and somebody tried to click a picture with it 
However, it remains inconclusive that it, whether it was a body or not, because it was like in a very dark environment and like stuff. But good fucking lord, imagine your fa- your friend fell down a click and you need to click pictures to see her body. Oh my god. Anyway, so uh, these were the pictures and there was one specific picture in specific 509 which was deleted and it was deleted in such a manner that it was not able to be, they were not able to recover it. It was in a digital camera so ideally they should have been able to recover it very easily and like running through some tests and you know like the usual media i don't know media whatever it's called techie things but they were not able to do do that and it was felt that somebody took the digital camera plugged it into some kind of device and properly erased all traces of that picture because even if it was manually deleted some traces of the deleted picture could have been found but picture for 509 was not found and it was in the series so the camera could not have fucked up that because it was a digital camera So that too. Now the story is only going to get creepier from this point on. Remember the place where the backpack was found? After about two months, I believe, or like in some, yeah, after about two months was a different thing. But like the police was able to find Chris's clothing, her shorts. They were properly zipped up, folded very neatly and put on a rock on the edge of the river. Okay, I'm holding my hair and I'm pulling them. Two months later, in around the same area, I do not understand how they find like such evidences around the same area, just lying around and they were not able to find in the first place. I'm not police, I'm new to true crime things and this keeps on baffling me. How do people not see evidence in front of them? So in the same area, they found a pelvic bone. And the worst, a foot inside a what inside a boot still attached like there's i saw the picture there's like socks there's bone fragments still inside the foot so it feels like the foot and the shoe were like cut off broken off in a manner that like if the leg was broken it was broken in a way that the foot literally broke off the body it got dismembered okay and yes And this foot, I believe, was also found displayed kind of on top of a rock upright. Like, yeah. All right. And um, the pelvic bone, the foot with the boot and Chris Kramer's bones were found all over and they were stark white. They looked as if they had been like totally bleached and like cleaned, you know. Soon after this, like bones from both the women were discovered Lizanne's bones on the other hand seem to have been decomposed as they were like flesh attached to them but Chris's were bleached as I told you earlier along with these two women's bones bones of three other individuals were found nearby and somebody just something just knocked on my door and I don't want to look at it like I'm not sure if you heard it or not and my cat's sleeping in front of me and he's snoring. That's kind of precious and cute. I'm happy that they're not, that he's not licking himself violently today. If, okay, back to the story. If I was about, like, if I was an idiot and I was to leave you here at the cliffhanger of all these things and not break down all of them, because this story actually needs analysis and breaking down of the facts, okay? My initial reaction when I went through all these stacks was, Buheria! witches i mean i love witches but there are some creepy witches out there too that somebody killed them either there's a serial killer or a psychopath or there was some kind of abduction or as i quote like my own quote something even more darker darker than the nature itself and if you also think that you are not wrong because honestly this is kind of totally messed up Now I'm going to break down some stories, some theories around this and some facts. Like there are a lot of them. Um, Now the uh, the Panamian authorities, if that's a word, deem that this is a closed case. But the Dutch authorities think that there's a lot more to the case which has not been properly investigated. This was, I believe they said in 2018. Um, Like this is a hundred percent chance that there's like foul play involved 
they said that there's a very high chance that there's a cohesion of evidence and like evidence tampering and all those beautiful amazing stuff nobody wants in any investigation now um so basically this um trail as i told you before is an up and down trail so down south is a downhill trip when you reach the top and up north is where you get into the deep wilderness and it's like uphill so um it's considered that chris died or was gravely injured during around 6th okay and lesan tried to open her f- phone for connection and such um they have also considered that since they ended up climbing like to the north side which was uphill again i'm like stressing on that completely different from the return part is that it was a very uh it was like a treacherous trail and they fell down and like and the picture with the body down the cliff so maybe that's how they were able to find the dismembered foot okay the objects which were laid out which makes total sense to me were maybe perhaps kind of an sos because mirrors and all those things laid out in a circle and if if there was a forest to f- a helicopter to fly over that specific area they would know that a human did all those things recently so they would know or right, this is the area that they need to search but they were not able to do that and it's considered that it was by the 11th that they both died or that was the last time they could say that they made any contact whatsoever or their phone batteries and everything they, that was like the basic end of their digital trail so maybe they both died by 11th and their bodies were to the mercy of the nature and the scavengers and all the things of the animal however the pro- problem with this proposed theory is that the trail is very easy to see from the higher altitude because it's your way back is downhill at the peak of the trail where it's supposed to end for the amateurs and the people without the guides they can see everything it's very easy to guide yourself from that top that or this is the way we need to go and so a wrong turn or they just like messed up something would not have happened because they knew they had to go downhill but where they went was uphill okay maybe the story speculation that i had that they ended up running after dog is true i have no idea okay um and it says that it's basically impossible for them to have made the mistake because one of them was an experienced mountaineer and yeah now there's another st- uh, the theory of abduction is kind of unlikely because they think that the kidnapper would not have allowed them to hold on to their phones however there's a very strong chance that somebody followed them now what i'm about to tell you next is this specific thing i was only able to found on this find on this specific youtube channel bedtime stories and i personally was not able to find any 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 documents supporting this specific theory but since it's out there i'm going to tell you about it so they talk about this unnamed guy who mistreated other women throughout the tour and the same unknown unnamed tourist guide was also said that they that he met with uh, chris and lorraine and offered them a trekking pack package deep into the wilderness but they declined for reasons not understood and i mean uh given that he's unknown he's an unknown guy i do not know how people know that somebody without an identity also did all these things with other women like kind of it's kind of weird on that level wait a fucking second okay i for a very quick second felt that i was not recording and oh my god no because nowadays earlier i used to record in like 30 different takes and now i just click on record and i go on with it like maybe a water break here and there but that's about it okay <laughs> that was scary uh this i guess the second time i thought that i was not recording but i was recording but i'm so smart anyway um so yeah so as i told you we do not know a lot about this guy but they also say that the bones were found half a mile from this guy's farm but yet again we do not know who this guy is so how do we know it's from away from his farm it does not make sense but okay it was there so you know so i have to tell you about it now 
it is also noted that the bones did not have a wear and tear tear as such if for example if fox or like crows was work to eat the bones there were no claw marks on it there were no bite marks on it they were kind of clean all right um so the scavengers theory is kind of like okay maybe not the folded clothes and 30 plus fingerprints on the backpack can be traced to like basically the tribes people they said that they found the clothing and they wanted to be respectful to the clothing because latin people are amazing and they folded it on the like river and like on a rock above the water such that they do not get dirty or anything so yeah and the bleaching bones part they say that it could be with because of the sun like where the bones were placed and like there are a lot of theories nothing conclusive and i really do not know what happened out there but the biggest red flag like the biggest 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 red flag in the entire thing was that other than the pelvic bone of chris chris's pelvic bone there was no other major big bone found of any of the victims any of the victims i'm going to tell you what any of the victims signifies in a little bit so there were no skulls there were no reported animals in the areas who could actually eat such large bones such as skulls no skulls were found no ribs i believe were found like properly whatever okay and so they say that because it was a very it's it's a very popular tourist spot no like over 18% of the gdp of the area is because of tourists so the police and the authorities try to bury the incident to make sure that there's a steady influx of st- tourists all the freaking time um uh, and yep and now okay so also the another theory with this is that there's some kind of cannibal serial killer person on loose or some kind of cannibal tribe which lives in the forest because they have in about 25 deaths or disappearances in the areas but uh, the police just goes on to say that the terrain is very loose and it's very harsh and april to october when it's the rainy season even the local people do not tread the trails and the women and everybody else who usually disappear do tread the trails in this re- in this time all right and so yeah i mean we can never really know what could have happened there we really could not even fathom what happened who did it or was it all nature all theories have their loopholes yes and all of them make equal sense and um i i think i need i should have said this before starting the podcast but like before starting the story but i'll say it now that i do not mean any disrespect to any victims or like no disrespect to anybody i am legit always wishing that all the victims all the people that i read about rest in peace if they died and just find their justice if they did not and yep so this was the case of las chicas or londes and yeah that's it now i believe there was something in middle of the podcast that i said that i will tell you by the end of the whole thing and i've forgotten what it is so i guess maybe for the next time because i really don't want to go back in the podcast and listen to it again because that's kind of boring and i'm like to i'm doing hot girl shit to do that thing and my hot girl shit is going to be basically sleeping so yeah that's the end of the episode for today and this month we are very soon going to have the listeners validation episode i have gotten one story so far and maybe we'll end up working with that one only and i'll write it in a manner that it becomes an entire episode because the rest of you all are lazy so thank you for this mysterious person i'm not going to disclose the name right now because let there be i don't know hunger games on who's my one for the first episode and yeah you can mail me or you can mail me and you can mail me your stories at koi at the rate made by nifix.com or you can even dm me on twitter or instagram as koi on air the podcast is hosted by koi on air co-produced with nifix the music is by lil adi and um is that it is that the end of the credits i've been doing this 
for so long i should have written this down i really that's the end of it if i missed anything like look up the previous episodes if there's anything more and yeah all right bye bye guys do not travel like travel but do not travel i do not know buy apple phones and gift me those apple phones because i need it i do not need a new one i need i need a new bose speaker so badly my present speaker works perfectly fine but i want to be fancy anyway enough of my rant make me rich guys give me your reviews on itunes and whatever make me famous bye